Welcome to the Real Andy of Beverly Hills Show. Hello, Beverly Troop. Welcome back and welcome to the Real Andy of Beverly Hills Show. How are you guys? I hope that you're having a beautiful and amazing day. It is Thursday and I have to tell you, girl, I am rain. Like, if I could, I will be taking today and tomorrow off because I do not want to do anything. Um, I don't know why. I don't know if it's the summer. I don't know if it's the heat. I don't know what is going on. I'm like, I just kind of like want to sleep all day. And you know what's the worst part? That when you want to sleep all day and you just can't, you know, like, it's like, why? You still have to do your things. You still have to go to work. You have to like live life. Ugh. Anyways, how are you guys? I hope that you're having a better, better, way better day that I am having today. But don't worry because I feel that when I feel down, this is what really put me in the mood again. It's come here, spend time with you, like talk about all of this tea that is going on. You know, I think that really kind of like helped me like, you know, like shake all of this, uh, negativity girl i think i'm i think i'm gonna do like caroline brooks and just like um uh, start some sage you know because the girl this is just too much no i'm just kidding i hope that you're having a beautiful and amazing day it is thursday and the weekend is almost here let me know how are you feeling today um is it true that we are in mercury retrograde because i i haven't wanted to look because that shit always fucked me up you know so i'm kind of like ignoring living in my the lulu world but like i don't know Anyways, um, guys, I do have, however, an amazing show for you today. We're going to be going down into the pop culture streets because we need to talk about Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie. We're going to be talking about Jennifer Lopez. I have some tea from Kim Kardashian and Kourtney Kardashian. And we need to talk about Big Brother. So if you are a fan of Big Brother, girl, stay tuned. Then... We're going to be going into the Bravo verse because we need to talk about a below deck. We're going to be talking about uh, Vanderpump Rules, Real Housewife of Orange County, Real Housewife of Berry Hills, and Summer House. So, girl, yes, the tea is popping today, okay? And you do not want to go anywhere because we need to talk about the juicy, juicy, juiciest part of the show which are my breaking news, and we're going to be talking about uh, The Real Housewife of New Jersey, of course, okay? So, girl, let's get cozy, bring your tea, bring your blanket, you know, let's let's do the best of this moment, and let's talk about this mess, so get ready, and let's go down into the pop culture streets. Welcome everyone to the Pop Culture Street and girl, I hope that you have your seatbelt on because we are going to be going through all of this tea like there is a no tomorrow. Girl, so it has been said for a while that Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie are preparing something for the simple life. You know, people were saying that they were going to get back together, that they're going to film another season. Like, there has been so many rumors, right? Well, Paris Hilton just posted, uh, well, yesterday, you know, actually, she posted that she was already filming a reunion special with Nicole Richie and that it's going to be amazing because they want to go down memory lane, okay? Now, we don't know exactly what this is going to be. We don't know if it's going to be like a reunion. We don't know if they're going to bring people that they film on, on, on all the different towns. We don't know if, if it's going to be with the producers. I mean, we have no idea what is going on. One thing is for sure is that we will get Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie back together somehow, like just talking about all of the things that went down during this amazing show. Guys, I remember, I mean, you know, The Simple Life, it's kind of like one of those OGs um, reality shows, you know? Like, uh, I mean, back in the day, I was living in Colombia, and, you know, I, I remember watching it every single week. Like, I was always so obsessed with The Simple Life, and uh, Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie, and I'm so excited to see what they're going to bring now, you know? And I, I hope that they're going to share, like, those, you know, behind the scenes, and, like, all of those things, like, like you never knew before like how the show was actually made, you know, I, I really, 
Although, if they are going to get together to film a new season of The Simple Life, girl, I will be like, I will love it. I will die. Like, I will be like, it will be it, you know? So, um, yeah, let me know what you guys think of the comments below. Are you exciting? Like, were you fans of The Simple Life? Like, girl, anyways. You know that Paris, I feel that everything that Paris has been doing, especially recently, it is, like, so good. We have seen her evolve so much as a mom, as a wife, as a woman, you know. And I feel that uh, maybe it's time for her to just loose up a little bit, you know, and just have a little bit of fun, you know, and just, like, forget about all of the the craziness that she has been going through lately. Well, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. All right. Let's talk a little bit about Miss Jennifer Lopez, of course, always drama. I feel that now that, you know, the selling of the, of the house is finally out there, it is, we are closer and closer to, like, them finally said, yes, we are getting a divorce, you know. Uh, Jennifer Lopez camp is really starting to get ready to go down into beating Ben Affleck, you know. And we're starting to see... A lot of uh, a lot of tea from you know like like oh Ben did this Ben did that you know Ben uh, said this Ben said that you know but what's interesting is and what I believe it could become an ugly divorce is that I feel that Ben Affleck camp is gonna be like oh no 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 girl you wanna go there let's go there. Okay, let's tell the truth about who Jennifer Lopez really is. And they're going to be going after each other, not directly, but with their little minions everywhere. Okay, And there is always tea about this person did this, this person did that, say this, say that. Girl, I think it's going to be crazy, incredibly crazy. Well, now they're saying that being married to Jennifer Lopez brought too much drama to Ben Affleck's life. Uh, the pair of marriage has been plagued with divorce uh, rumors, blah, blah, blah. Okay, a source has claimed to OK Magazine that the alleged breakdown of the strange couple union has left the Oscar winner licking his wounds. Jennifer was Ben's dream woman. It was drama all the time. He's feeling down about it and is upset and depressed. It didn't work out even though he knows ending it is the right thing to do. The source also added that the pair polar opposites lifestyle added to the stress of the romance. Jennifer has a big entourage that follow her around daily. Glam squad, videographer, photographers, assistants, trainers. She's tried to make Ben understand that being Jennifer Lopez is a 24-7 job. She is her brand. She lives and breathes it while Ben can leave his work at the door if he chooses to. Jennifer is keeping her head up. She doesn't want to be seen as the villain. Oh, too late, girl. They have gone through phases where things haven't been as great between them due to their different personalities and not getting enough time together. They are not always on the same page. They both have so much going on between taking care of their families and their work commitments, and it can be a lot for them. Well, I keep saying it like, girl, like, if why people don't think these things true, especially when you are not a 20 year old person anymore, you know? I'm so sorry, but when you are old enough, you know how the, the, the other person is. You already know the personality. You already know. If you are a person who is 24-7 working, you need to be with someone who is going to understand that lifestyle. And you know, you already, I mean, you already have to know that the other person is not like that. You know, that the other person is chill, that the other person is like, whatever. How is this going to work out? You know, and I, I think that Jennifer, she just really wanted Ben to change. You know, and I also get that. I also think that Ben at some point he was like, oh, I mean, girl, we're already millionaires. Like, we don't need like having money all the time or work 24 seven. Like, when are you ever going to retire? You know, and she and he thought that maybe Jennifer was ready to do that. It's just not going to happen. Girl, I can picture Jennifer Lopez being kind of like a Madonna, you know, like she's going to be like or chair, you know, like 80 years old and like doing shit left and right. I mean, it's, too, it's, it's going to be too hard to change something like someone like that, you know? 
um, just get divorced. You know, just just put the news out there. You know, like how are you feeling about this whole Jennifer situation? Like every single day, there is something going on. I mean, we will mention it all and we talk about it, but it's kind of like I'm tired. You know what I'm tired? It's not like the divorce in itself. It's like the minions talking, saying things here and there. Again, she said, he said, oh my God, this person did this, this person did that. It's like, can we just have Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck just saying what it needs to be said, you know, instead of like the little minions here and there? Like, girl, I don't know. Anyways, let me know what you guys think on the comments below about this too. Now, let's talk a little bit about the Kardashians because a couple, so some days ago, actually, it was reported that, you know, Kourtney Kardashian was in the outs with his family and, I'm sorry, with her family and her friends. You know, that she was not talking to anyone, that she was not talking to Kim, not talking to Chloe not talking to her friends, you know, that she was alienating herself, you know, and that people were getting a little bit too worried, like, what is going on? You know, that she will all only appear if they have to film, and that's pretty much it, right? Well, now, another source is saying that Corny actually believe, I mean, that all of that is a bunch of bullshit, you know, that she's really trying to do the best that she can, but she has not alienated anyone, you know, that she has a great relationship with everyone, and she believes that actually it's Kim and her camp, the ones who are in charge of spreading these rumors around. I don't know, I feel that someone is getting a little bit too paranoid, but like, girl. So, it says that according to the US Sun on Tuesday, Courtney is dealing with turmoil in her life right now when it comes to her family. However, it's only with Kim. An insider claimed to the outlet that the pair had another falling out again with Courtney telling her pals that she thinks that Kim is talking behind her back. She even believes Kim is behind the rumor that she ditched her friends and her marriage amid her marriage to Trav. The source says, Courtney and Kim barely speaks now if it's not on camera for the show. Since Courtney had her newborn, Rocky, she's being so busy. She's got work, breastfeeding, looking after her kids and stepkids, and is perfectly happy to stay at home and be in her own little bubble. She doesn't have time to go to parties with Kim or spend hours with her family and friends. She was really hurt recently when she read the story about how she's cutting off her old friends. Uh, I think that Courtney thinks it's people in Kim's circle behind the rumors. When Kim doesn't have a man, she's always stirring up family drama. She was targeting Chloe a few months back, and now it's Kern's turn again. Well, girl, someone needs to do something to, to, I mean, to create drama for that reality TV show. You know, like that shit is not going to sell by itself. Like, I mean, it's not like it is the best show in the world right now. Right. I, I feel that, uh, I don't know. There is something about the relationship between Corny and, and Travis. Like it a little bit weird, or maybe it's just weird because we are so used to like the Kardashian clan being together all the time, no matter what. And maybe this is the first time that Courtney is actually putting boundaries, you know, and being like, well, in that relation, her relationship, and being like, hey, I just don't want to like do all of this. Also, it is true. If you just have a newborn child, like, are you expecting to just like drop the baby and just go to events and parties, you know, and just being like the socialite that she's supposed to be? It doesn't, it doesn't even make any sense. Now, do I believe that Kim will do that to, to Chloe? I believe that Kim has had conversations with her friends, you know, and I believe that because it, that if that's her feelings, those are valid. You know, if Kim feels that Courtney is just, you know, being by herself and not talking, you know, and alienating herself, you know, if that's how she feels, that's how she feels. And maybe she was just like, you know, sharing those opinions with some kind of friends. Now, if the friends are going around like spreading the rumors more and more then that's on the friends you know because kim it i mean i guessing she's just saying this to the people that she trusts the most right but it is not her fault that these people are just going around and spreading the rumor even more and more um i don't know i think that we are getting 
to a point, I mean, we already got to a point where each one of them has their own families and their own stuff. And I think at the end of the day, no matter how close you are with your sisters, your number one priority is going to be now your immediate family, your husband, your kids, period. You know, and like going like all of this drama with your sisters and stuff like that, you know, it, it's just going to be on a second plane. So I just believe that Corny is just evolving and becoming a different person. And now the problem is maybe that new person is not going to fit into the Kardashian mold, you know? So I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. All right. Where are my fans of Big Brother? Because if you thought that Bravo was the only network or the only shows that were going through shit, with lawsuits and scandal and all of that, well, that is not the case because Big Brother is now going into this whole situation, you know, with um, this guy who wrote a book, used to work for Big Brother, like wrote a book, did the whole thing, and basically exposed uh, Big Brother for many things, but one of the things that were very kind of like, um, um, shit, I forgot the word, Latino moment, guys. Um, const not con Shit. I hate when I forgot the word. Um, conspiracy? No. Controversial. Oh my God. Thank you, God. Controversial. You know, one of the things that he said that it was very controversial is that the Big Brother uh, casting, whatever, they, they purposely uh, cast racist people to stir up the drama and that they actively avoid casting transgender people on the show you know and of course this was like a big big accusation you know and at some point apparently the network uh cbs sent a cease and desist letter to this guy and was basically pretty much saying like like retract or you cannot say this or whatever you know but the guy he's literally going out and saying no 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 i don't give a shit about your cease and desist i have the proof receives a screenshot timeline you know and i will not be silenced by you he is doubling down on all of the accusations and he is uh saying that just like bring it you want to come for me let's go and i will come for you you know he is uh, he says that he as a member of the lgbt community he uh has been uh has been um pushed to live you know on the shadows for a very long time had to be on the closet for a very long time he had to look at do all of these things and now he will not be like he is not afraid of standing up for her for himself and that to put the truth out there now i have to tell you i do i mean there are so much shit still in hollywood you know and i don't know when or if this will ever change you know casting in hollywood is one of the craziest things that you will ever experience in the world you know they only want to cast the same stereotypical people you know either you are the hot one with the apps you know or you have to be like extra outgoing and funny you know or you have to be i don't know you know so they always kind of like have these like um you know these like uh, positions that they just need to feel you know like oh we need you know the black car we need the lgbt car we need but the LGBTQ car, it cannot be too gay because we don't want to make people uncomfortable. You know, we need to like have uh, this thing. We need to have the villain. We need to have this, you know, and it's very, very like weird, you know? I mean, it left a lot of people without the chance of like really experience, for example, and I'm not talking about like normal reality shows. I mean, these are competition shows, you know? How many people are trying to get into like Big Brother or... Uh, the Amazing Race, or like everything that you can even imagine, you know, I have seen castings for even like little shows on YouTube, you know, competition shows on YouTube, where they ask you all of these crazy, crazy questions that you are like, is this really necessary? You know, is this really what are we still doing in 2024? So I'm not surprised, you know, at the end of the day, the producer's job is to produce situations, you know, and to produce good TV. Now, is it 100% fall of the network? I don't believe that. I mean, what they're doing is nasty, you know, and weird, and they are the ones doing that. But also at the same time, the people who really are at fault is the people who are watching the shows, you know, all of us, the viewers, because I 
I name myself, I love reality TV, you know, but we love drama. We love to see people confronting each other. That's what we want, you know? And if we put a lot of like good people only, then we are not going to have a reality TV show. Now, the only thing that I am, I do not agree is that, you know, like the physical stuff should be still so like important, especially now. I think one of the things that, that, you know, is seeing a declining on reality TV is because the newest generation, generations, uh, the Gen Zs and the Gen Alphas, you know, and even the younger millennials, you know, like we, we are tired of the fakeness. We are tired of, you know, the, the portrait of perfection all the time. And one of the reasons why TikTok got so popular is because we get to see raw people right there. Like we don't want to see people with filters, people with super makeup, people being extra fake, that's not a thing anymore, you know? And these reality TV shows, especially the cable ones, is like they have not caught up with the times. They're still thinking, many of them, that you need to have the hottest people ever, the funniest people ever, you know? And, uh, you know, most of the time, it just doesn't work out. Now, I I will get it maybe on a dating show, even though it's like super weird because why do you need to have only like hot people? But it is what it is, you know. Like if you go to Love Island, you know, like I think one of the one of the uh, one of the things that you need to have the requirements is that you need to have apps, you know. Um, so I get I get things like this, but like for a competition show, you know, why what what is wrong to into casting a transgender person, you know? What is wrong into casting a black and Asian Latino, like whatever, you know, just like gay, bisexual, like whatever, you know, like the most represent, the more representation, the better, you know. Um, But yeah, this is not the way that people are thinking over here. And the castings of girls, I, I, I have to tell you, I have been in castings that are just like insane, you know, Uh, and they will even like sometimes even in the same like ad, they will tell you like, oh, we're looking for hot people. Like if you are hot you know with apps with this with that then apply like otherwise don't like waste our time you know or your time you know and it's like okay you know um but yeah anyway so that is going on so now big brother is gonna be going into this whole i'm guessing uh next era because look at what is happening in bravo with all of the lawsuits all of the bullshit well now it's gonna start spilling everyone else i don't know i wouldn't be surprised if we start getting like a lot of lawsuits from like contestants or more people that uh, work for uh, the shows. Anyways, let me know what you guys think on the comments below about all of that tea. And that's it from the pop culture streets. But don't go anywhere because now it is time to go into the Bravo verse. <laughs> All right, everyone, welcome to the Bravo Verse. We open our portal and we are here, girl. I mean, come on. So, where are my fans of a below deck down under? Here. I mean, give me all the Captain Jason you want in the world, preferably shirtless, okay? And I'm here to watch every single episode of Captain uh, of <laughs> Captain Jason of Below Deck Down Under. Such a good show! They did an amazing thing between Captain Jason and Aisha. Both of them, like they really, really deliver on the first two seasons. But now it's like, oh my god! Like they have not been renewed for a season three. Aisha moved to like Below Deck Med. Like, what is going on over here, right? Well, now the surprise came because. Below Deck Down Under got nominated for an Emmy Award, you know? So, of course, Bravo and the, all the pages, you know, and everyone is like, congratulations, you know? They got, they got uh, nominated for Outstanding Unstructured Reality Program and for Outstanding Picture Editing for an Unstructured Reality Program. So, they got two nominations, okay? And people are being like, okay, so, girl, I mean, clearly the show is good enough to be nominated for an Emmy. Why are we not getting a green light on season three? 
like what is going on now i know like there is a lot of shit going in, in into bravo all every single one of the shows is going through some kind of change right now and people are shaking left and right i don't know who got i mean who got promoted to ceo i don't know who got a uh, different kind of jobs but someone is screwing shit up into in bravo you know and they are making all of these weird changes to the point that they had to cancel bravo con 20 uh, uh, this year you know so it's kind of like we 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 are like like this you know like there are there is no floor we don't know what is going to happen like all of the shows are like being completely bullshit right now i'm worried but anyways the point is that this should be enough to green light season three of below deck down under you know like they have like it's so much better than even some of like of the other below decks even better than the new below deck with the new captain you know i'm like ugh, girl you know but anyways uh yeah let me know what you guys think on the comments below now let's talk a little bit about the vanderpump rules because yesterday we were all shaking we, I, I was like, I cannot understand how this is possible that Tom Sandoval sued Ariana Maddox for going into her phone, you know, and, you know, sent herself the video of Raquel Rachel. Well, there is a lot of layers to this, you know, and of course, everyone is hating on Tom Sandoval like there is no tomorrow, right? To the point that Tom Sandoval, her girlfriend and uh, the extras, they all deleted their social media accounts so basically there is no way to reach them okay and people who, th who think they can reach them to schwartz and sandys girl that is not a thing because apparently he's again not like not able to go back there you know because of the amount of hate that they're receiving so anyways um very surprising but it is it, it is because of a bunch of legal stuff you know that all everything initiated with raquel rachel um uh, suing uh both of them so right now it's a bunch of lawyers just playing left and right. But now we have Sheena Shea like reacting, of course, to the whole situation, uh, being the fact that she you knows she's very close with Ariana and she actually decided to rekindle, re rekind rekindle, yeah, her friendship with Tom Sandoval at the end of last season. Well, she says that she is appalled by the whole situation. She says that she told Tom Sandoval, "Do not make me look like a fool." And that's exactly what he did. And she says he, of course, had to make me look like a fool again. She says that she will not be uh, pursuing anymore her friendship with Tom Sandoval. That she will. That she definitely do not condone any of the decisions that he is making, and that she is done so with the friendship because what he is doing is just plain disgusting at this point okay now we don't know what is going to happen with this lawsuit i mean this if the if is if for some reason he will win i mean he he will win this um lawsuit it will literally mean that it is illegal for anyone to go into another person's cell phone without their authorization this could be like a game changer like in the in the United States, girl, you know. I mean, I don't think it's going to happen, but like can you imagine if that actually becomes a law? Like you cannot go into your partners, your kids, your anyone's phone without their permission? Girl. Anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments below about Sheena Shea um maybe seeing the light finally. I don't know. Now there is going to there is a campaign that is starting to get gain traction again on x you know and it is of course of course the hashtag fire tom sandoval a lot of i mean there is no news of what is going to happen with vanderpump rules but you know everyone is saying like if if tom sandoval returns to the show it, it's going to be such a huge mistake i think to be very honest with you that the only way that you can move forward with this is to fire both of them tom and ariana Yes, I know you think that it's going to be like unfair, but I feel that there is no way to move forward with the scandal cloud over the show. I think that, you know, you just need to like, they just need to leave or maybe, you know, Ariana, Ariana is going to be so busy anyways that she probably just need to be like a friend of the show to do little cameos here and there 
when they're filming about, uh, you know, something about her, right? And that's pretty much it. I think it's the only way that the rest of the cast is going to be able to, like, move on and maybe find new storylines. But who knows what is going to happen, you know? So let me know what you guys think on the comments below. Now, let's talk a little bit about uh, The Real Housewife of Orange County because now one of the talks of the town is, you know, Jennifer Pedranti and Gina Kirshenheit. So if you saw the season premiere, we know that, you know, Jennifer is getting evicted from her home and she's going to be moving in with Ryan, you know, which now they're engaged, they're going to get married, you know, and he offered, he said like, you know what, you are my family, the kids are my family, we're going to do this, right? Um, well, Gina is, um, well, it's kind of like 50-50, but I saw like a lot of like hate towards Gina because of the comments that she did about, you know, Jennifer not paying the rent to the point uh, that she got evict, evicted, you know, from the house and that she should have said something. As you know, Gina Kirshenheit vouched for her in order to get the house. And apparently, she was able to, like, like avoid the credit check for Jennifer in order to get the house. Now, the comments are divided into, like, oh, you know what? You know, Jen should have done something. Jen should have done this or that, you know. Or Gina is being an asshole for doing all of these comments while Jen is going through all of this situation. Now, the problem with this is that this is not a normal eviction, you know, and I think that that is why I feel that Gina should be a little bit more compassionate in this case, because this is not a normal eviction. This is not like Jennifer was just, you know, on her couch, you know, eating chips and like ignoring all of her responsibilities and not paying for like a year, you know, and then going into this whole process. Um, it was because of the divorce, because, you know, supposedly she thought that uh, or, or it was supposed to be that the husband was to pay was supposed to pay for his half of the house, and she was going to pay for the other half of the house, and she was making her payments, but she didn't never knew that the husband was not doing those payments. Well, the ex husband was not doing those payments anymore. You know, call me crazy, of course, because they're divorced and all of that. But I think there there is a bunch of legalities, you know, uh, when it comes to this. Um, so, I don't know. <laughs> like, it is a very complicated situation. I've, so, but it, my, my point is that it is not a normal eviction, you know? So, I feel that Gina, instead of being so, like, judgmental of, like, oh, why, like, you did, you are not paying, like, you are, you know, damaging my name, you know, like this and that, because the only thing that she's caring about is herself and her name, uh, I think she should have been a little bit more aware of the situation and being, like, Look, I understand you're going through this divorce and I understand that you are not getting evicted because of you, because you were paying for your half. So like, we're, let's see how we can solve this situation. And also, if you go around explaining, you know, to whoever you would need to explain yourself, which I don't get it, right, that this, this is not a normal eviction, people will get it, okay? Because at the end of the day, it's because of a bitter divorce. And that is the main reason behind it. So it's it's a little bit different, you know. Um, so I feel that Gina should definitely be a little bit more compassionate when it comes to these uh, situations. And also, like, yes, she vouched for Jennifer, but she didn't need to do that. You know, like, if I'm, look, if I'm going to put my hands on fire for someone, then I'm going to have to be ready to affront the consequences because it means that I trust that person so much that I will do this. And girl, Jennifer Petranti came into the show last year. You, you, do, you do not know her that well, you know? So it's, up, it's your own fault for just going around and just making favor left and right. I don't know maybe what she was trying to do there, you know? Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I think, you know? I do believe that, of course, Jennifer needs to uh, give Gina an apology, you know, and say, like, we, uh, I'm sorry that I didn't say anything. We should have talked about this before. Uh, but more than that, you know, is it, it really wasn't Jennifer's fault because according to what we know, Jennifer was paying for her, her half of 
the rent. It was the ex-husband that, you know, stopped paying just to fuck her up. You know what I mean? <sighs> so anyways, let me know what you guys think on the comments below about that situation. Are you team Gina or are you team Jennifer? All right, so now let's talk a little bit about the Real Housewife of Beverly Hills because yesterday Mauricio Omansky was caught in Greece landing and kissing another girl mm -hmm, on the lips. First time in history that we see Mauricio Omansky actually kissing another woman that it is not um that it is not Kyle Richards you know now a lot I mean look I believe that there is nothing wrong with it at the end of the day they have been separated for like over a year they are they, they can do whatever they want to do they were very open about it both of them so like I really don't care but I'm talking about this because there is now this thing going around online of people saying that this is all fake and that this is all just for the ratings because of the show is because the show is filming right now. So they are trying to to say that Kyle orchestrated the whole thing. I mean, look, I think like sometimes the conspiracy theories just go too far. You know, like at some point, like it's like, are you going to blame Kyle Richards for absolutely everything that happens? You know, it's like, like the bitch kind of breathe because she's blaming for like contaminating the air. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like, at some point we need to understand like, girl, it is not that deep. You know, Mauricio Mansky is moving on with his life. He's, this is probably his new girlfriend or maybe, you know, just like a, a hookup in Greece, who knows, you know, but he's like just living his best life. Kyle is not saying anything. I don't think Kyle really cares at this point. They have been separated at this point. I think even like two years, probably at this point. So who cares? You know what I mean? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, people are saying that it is fake, that Kyle did everything just for ratings because, you know, the, 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 well, the show right now is nothing is going on, you know, on what they have been filmed. So, so that they're trying to, like, push new narrative. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. All right, guys. So, last but not least, I know there is a lot of tea today. Last but not least, it is time to talk about Summer House very quickly because people are giving Lindsay Ho Hovart a lot of backlash for film Summer House while being pregnant, okay? As you know, yeah, she's pregnant, happy news, all of that, but she, she just uh, uploaded a picture of her pregnant in the house, you know, where they film, and people are being like, why are you going to this old crazy parties and house parties like you are pregnant you should not be doing this you know to uh which she responds like are pregnant women not supposed to party and have fun you know so it's a little bit of like everything at the end of the day i do agree with Lindsay. like look if she was drinking alcohol or smoking or doing drugs you know like i will be like <laughs> bitch what are you doing right but there is no rule that says that you cannot be pregnant and be at, at a party, you know. Now, it will all depend, like, if you have a very, you know, um, complicated pregnancy or something like that, it will be different. But if everything is going good and according to the plan, and if that's what, I mean, this is her job, you know. Like, Summer House is her job, you know. And, of course, she's going to be there to rub her pregnancy on Carl's face, you know, and to call him out on absolutely everything and to create drama so will i do it if i was pregnant um i mean i think i will go out you know i don't know if i will go and stay on a house full of like party all the time but i don't see anything wrong with being on a party here and there you know it's 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 her thing um so anyways yes that's very quickly so let me know what you guys think on the comments below i mean would you do it do you think that she's doing right do you think that she's doing wrong i don't know let me know in the comments below all right guys so that's it from the bravo verse but don't go anywhere because it is time to go into the juiciest juiciest part of the show those are my uh breaking news
breaking news, everyone, and it is time to talk about the, the Real Housewife of New Jersey. Girl, yesterday was the very, very weighted filming of the new reunion or whatever thing they're going to be doing, you know, and we need to talk about it, okay? So, a long time ago, I give you some tea that I got, okay? And we were all talking about it. We knew that this, 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 this reunion was not going to be a normal reunion. And we knew that they were going to be separate and that they were going to be watching the, the, the last episode. I mean, those news have been out there for, for like ever, you know. Uh, at some point, the information that it was given to me, you know, was that they were waiting to see how this was actually going to be filmed because they were told that they were going to be able to say their piece, that this was going to be the last chance that they will have to put whatever they wanted to put out there and to say their piece. And after that, whatever happens, happens, you know? And at some point, someone else told me that they were thinking that they were going to get one-on-one interviews, with, uh, one of them with Andy Cohen, where every single one of them were going to be able to, you know, say whatever they want to say, and they were going to get prepared for it, okay? Now, according to a new report, and I'm going to I'm just going to talk about the report because I'm still waiting for uh, the confirmation from my own sources. OK, but according to the new report, what was filmed was both of them. Uh, I'm sorry, two groups, you know, uh, watching the last episode and giving commentary to the last episode, you know, very much kind of like Orange County season one reunion. <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, that. On one side, we have Jennifer Aiding, uh, Teresa Judas, Jackie Goldschneider, you know, and on the other one was uh, Melissa Gorga, Danielle Cabral, uh, Rachel Fuda, and Margaret Josephs, and that Dolores, because she's Switzerland, she was literally running side to side, you know, uh, to do, uh, to be part of uh, both groups, right? And that they filmed the whole thing, they watched the whole thing, you know, and that they did that. However, they say that Andy Cohen was not present. And that was very, very, very shocking for everyone because they thought that they were going to be, that he was going to be present according to what they were told before, right? Now, I, like again, like I said, I'm still waiting for confirmation of certain things. One thing that I do know for sure is that let me see how I put this out there. Um, there will be a lot of tea that is going to be exposed, you know, and that definitely they they use this opportunity not only to give commentary but to say their piece, to say whatever they needed to say and to expose whatever it needed to be exposed. Okay, and that they put everything out there with actual receipts not empty envelopes like last season you know what i mean um i'm still waiting to see how that is gonna look like we're still gonna have to wait and see what bravo actually uses or not you know i think that the whole reunion is well or, or this whatever it is it's not really a good idea you know I think this, I think Bravo should just put on her, you know, their big boy pants, you know, and just let these girls kill each other on, on the reunion and do whatever they needed to do, you know. Uh, but apparently they're just overtired with everything, you know. Uh, they knew that they're going to bring, you know, things with the bloggers and things that are happening outside of the show and that it was going to get extremely toxic and they wanted to avoid all of that. I get it. I still think that it is a horrible, horrible move. The husbands were not there, so it's, it was only the ladies. So it's going to be interesting to see how Teresa, Jennifer, you know, defend their position and finally, finally expose what it needed to be exposed. And of course, it's going to be interesting to see how Margaret and Melissa also try to do the same thing. You know, at the end of the day, because they were not together, they don't know what the other side said. So there is no way that they're going to be able to respond to whatever, you know. Now it's up to Bravo to give us what we want. You know, they can either 
tell us the truth and put everything out there like we are expecting to be to happen or they can do that like what they're doing in atlanta and just delete all the good things that are supposed to be exposed and then just be like oh wow she's a bitch mm, you know so at the end of the day it really is gonna be uh, it, it's really gonna be down to bravo to decide what is going to happen okay uh i feel that they keep playing with these women you know uh they were told that they were going to get these interviews with Andy Cohen, you know, and that they were going to be able to say their piece out there, you know, and to bring whatever they wanted to say. So for Andy Cohen to not be there, it's like a big surprise to absolutely everyone, you know, but that is just not going to stop them. That is just not going to stop them to put out there what it needs to be out there. How is this going to affect the show? That is going to be the main question. We still have two more episodes to go and the reunion. So let's wait and see. Anyways, let me know what you guys think on the comments below. I will let you know more as soon as I know more. All right, guys. So that's it for today. That's the end of our show. Thank you for being here and thank you for watching. Before we go, as usual, it is time to give you the vibe of the day, of course. And today, July 18, it says, if you are feeling doubtful about your possibilities, ground yourself with gratitude. Gratitude for how much you have evolved emotionally, spiritually, and mentally. Gratitude for the strength it took to overcome and triumph through challenging moments. Gratitude that you are miraculously and consistently being protected and provided for. Gratitude that you have what it takes to keep going and winning. Gratitude for all your blessings. Remember, like, God, the universe, whatever you believe, will always give you so much, but you need to be grateful for every single thing that you get and that you have because there are so many people that have way less than you, okay? All right, guys, um, thank you for being here. Remember, if you want a personalized message from me, you can book me through Cameo. Uh, the link is in the description below. If you want to get your roses from Rose Forever or uh, this one's right here, roses that last up to a year and now they have these amazing candles. If you want to get any of that or liquid IV, go to the links on the description below, okay? The discounts are already applied. Everything is already applied. So go there. You just have to click on the link and get your order now, right? Don't forget to follow me on my social media. You can find me anywhere as Real Andy B H. Real Andy B H. And don't forget to like this video, share this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'll see you tomorrow on another The Real Andy of Very Hill Show. See ya. Bye.